perspective. So this is the outline of our presentation. We will talk in detail about uh, each step from the first visit to the prosthetic finalization. Let's get to the heart of the webinar. The core of our workflow is well represented by the, this principle, smile guided dentistry. Normally, the word guided is adopted in a surgical context, but we are firmly convinced that the smile is the first factor to consider when a patient has asked for a clinical consultation. The smile unites everyone, even our patients. It is difficult to imagine a patient who can accept a treatment plan that does not put aesthetics on evidence, but that is just functionally perfect. Imagine, I can switch off the audio. Imagine going over the, to the other side, imagine be, being your patient, or rather our customers who intended to carry out a project, a large project, perhaps the most amazing <clears throat> projects of their life, their home. In order for this to be possible, it is essential that a specialist, our architect, for example, can listen to us, listen to our needs, our dreams. Basically, the specialist must put his skills into practice, express his skills through a project. The question is this. It's a technical project that we are unable to understand. Our patients are not in a position to understand. In order for us to appreciate its essence, we need to add volumes shapes, proportions. We need a composition. Like in dentistry. How to do? We need new technology exactly as it does in the construction world. We proceed with the survey that is our analysis. We have to collect data, process it. As you can see, integrate it. In this way, we can virtually recreate the ground within which we will realize our dream. It's not just any terrain, it's our terrain. This is called contextualization. Only in this way, we can really see, see our dream. And it's the same to for, for our patients. We cannot forget to consider the frame of our treatment plan, the lips, the nose, the eyes. Only in this way, we can believe in our dreams. If we can see it, we can make it happen. This is my house and I desire it like this because even if virtually I am living it with my mind, I am in my house. This means previewing. This means transferring the essence of a project.
as in this case, is not a prosthetic finalization, but a mock-up. A mock-up that allows the patient to believe it and allows the clinician to correctly follow the established therapy. So, that's why we always start with a smile when we want to set up any therapy. And then I wonder if it's possible to have a protocol that allows, to, allows me to preview, to plan, to communicate. Not only with the patient, but with the whole team that is with the laboratory. You can do it through digital smile system protocol. I'm not talking about a simple software, but a precise clinical protocol that has the software as the protagonist. This is the project that I share with my adventure companions, Luca Hortensi, Tommaso Vitali, and Marco Hortensi. So, what does the smile system is? What is it? A smile design or aesthetic project? It's quite evident out how we are convinced of the second option. It's not just a decoration, it's a design. So, we think that we need a digital smile system workflow. We therefore present the entire workflow that allows the patient's clinical data to be collected and to have a correct mock-up on the first visit. I give the word to Luca, who will describe the steps in detail. And I start sharing my screen. Thank you. Thank you, Luca Lavornia. I can share my image because I have a bad line. So I'm sorry, but so you can see my my name and my screen now. I have to 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 share with you my the second step of the digital workflow, the first visit, the digital first visit. And uh, thank you very much, Luca, and uh, for your introduction. Thank you. thank you very much, Veronica, for uh, your support and your work. Thank you, everybody. Hello. Good afternoon. I'm Luca Artensi, I'm a dentist and I live in Italy <laughs> in uh, this difficult moment. But let's go to the clinical case. Today we want to share with you the, our experience about uh, digital workflow, um, talking about uh, some cases. And um, so we have a, a patient like uh, a guide, uh, we want to describe, we would like to describe this uh, workflow on the patient. The first thing that we do during our activity is to, to do the digital first visit. What is the first digital visit? I use some devices to uh, collect data uh, about function and about the state of the patient. This is very important because if you want to improve your um, information about the patient, you have to collect that data. And you can do that only with uh, digital devices. If you want to make that with uh, uh, clinical phases or the normal activity, you can do that. But remember, if you have some digital um, devices, you can obtain, you can get more information. This is very important. So this patient, for example, she has two dentures, two old dentures, and she needed to improve um, her aesthetic and uh, the function because um, she has this whole dental and they can't uh, hit very well. So when uh, uh, she uh, was in uh, my dental office, I collecting oral health data, data, uh, for example, aesthetic aspect and the functional aspect, which is very important. And you can do uh, it in two ways. For example, I love to, to check, I love to to see the nasolabial angle because it's very important for the aesthetic of the face. And I think you have to study this angle. If you want to share, to, sorry, to try with the patient the right, um, the right prosthesis, because if you want to have 
um, um, to share with the patient the idea that you have to, to know about this angle. Sometimes patients uh, come in our dental office and uh, ask to ask, okay, doctor, I need a, a fixed rehabilitation, a full arch rehabilitation. I don't want uh, a gentle, okay, this is right. But I think you have to study this angle if you want to improve the aesthetic of the upper lip. So when I have a patient like this, I take an impression of the dental area. I take an impression of the whole denture, and I check the distance from the position of the central incisor and the bone. So I can have an idea about the future of the my prosthesis. If you want to improve, so if you want to improve the aesthetic of the patient, you have to control this angle. And I want to, uh, to have uh, um, data about it during my first visit. Second aspect, I use electromyography during my active daily practice. Um, not always, it's true, not always, but when I have a so difficult case, clinical case like this, I want to use electromyography because I want to know more about the force of the patient, about the, um, the state of the muscles, about uh, uh, the state of the masseter, um, a muscles I see uh, so important for my, uh, for my work. So I think electromyography is a, a device um, that I have to use uh, in this type of uh, patient. And you can see on PubMed, many and many uh, publications about this argument because is, this argument is, is not new, but now, today, uh, electromyography is uh, um, a new device inside our dental office. This is a, a old publication was very important for me and uh, from uh, Mariana Vrampo. She, she teaches in the uh, United States. And this is very important, this argument, because uh, I have to control the final position of the central incisors with the bone of the patient. Because if you want to know how is the best prosthesis for that patient, you have to know the distance from the central incisors and the um, the vestibular bone is very, very important. So I invite you to, to check to, to find this paper because it's so, uh, so important for our activity, prosthetic activity. This uh, patient um, has two old dentists. I don't like it, nah, I know, but I can use it in the first stage, in first step of my visit. Because if, one, I, I, if I don't want to prepare some temporaries, I can change the vertical dimension, I can change the stability, I can change the, um, the position of the mandible uh, with this uh, prosthesis. Like I used the new occlusal rims. So if you don't, you, if you don't want a occlusal rim, if you don't want to, to work on a new occlusal rims, you can use the whole dentures of the patient, but you have to change some data. For example, vertical dimension or other. So in this patient, for example, I use the soft relining material to have more stability during my activity, during my control, during my uh, first visit. And I have to, um, to use some device to study the patient. For example, uh, a normal articulator or a digital articulator, okay? But in our workflow, uh, the first thing that I do, I take two images of the patient with the special glasses on the head because I want to have some measure of the head of the patient, and you can do that only with the glasses on the head. It's fundamental. You can't uh, measure in the right way the face of the patient or the, um, the teeth if you, if you don't have a, a device on the head of the patient. It's this very important. We started this, sorry, we started this type of uh, um, first step of our workflow in the past three years, and we know that we have to use, sorry, we must use reflex camera during our activity. We have to take images uh, in a um, distance uh, about one meter and 50 centimeters. 
with a, um, a particular objective lens. So I invite you to, to control this uh, information because I think it's important. We can see on PubMed many, many, many articles about uh, the digital workflow and in uh, um, and rarely I can see something on the head of the patient when I want to measure uh, um, her face or his face. So you can see a beautiful video from my friend Luca Lavonia and show that if you don't have the same reflex camera or a, a reflex camera with a particularly objective lens, you can change the shape of the patient. So if you take an image, you have to have you have to use a correct camera. We can talk about it in the in the at the end of our lecture. So after. I take two uh, images and I put these images inside a 2D software, Digital Smile system. I use it because I want to share with the patient immediately, immediately, information about the future of the, his smile. But I don't want only to talk with the patient. I want to have uh, uh, information, data for my new therapy. I want to prepare a plan of treatment. So I can do that with this uh, software. And this is some um, publication from our group. Thank you, all friends. And so I can use, during my third visit, I can take analog impressions or I can use intraholar scanner. I, don't, I can't talk about it in a few minutes, but I think, but I think if you have to control on your patient, if your intraholar scanner is the best system to get the right impression of the patient because sometimes you have uh, a difficult anatomy you have the the anatomy is so difficult to 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 control to 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 have an impression about this anatomy so i prefer to use analog impression but not always not always so when i can take a good a digital impression i take a digital impression so during my first digital visit i use digital as my system I take two images of the patient and I take uh, impression, digital impression, when I, mm, when I, mm, uh, when I can uh, get the best uh, anatomy of the patient. After this phase, I share with my dental technician all this information, in pre digital impression, photos from DSS, and my dental technician uh, in particular, Mark Hortensi, our dental technician, our expert of uh, DSS at the CAMCAM. Um, Marco does the superimposition of if this, this STL inside the 3D software. He makes a superimposition from the impression model and the image of the patient with the red outline. This red outline is the final uh, aesthetic, the final shape that I want in my restoration, in my um, prosthesis. So this is um, a superimposition. Now we can see a video about this superimposition. Two minutes. I'm sorry, look, I don't want to, to have more time than you, but it's very important to show this video because we can see here, uh, as you can see on the screen, Marco or I, you, if you have a 3D software, you can match the photo from DSS and the digital impression or the, um, the, the images of the model, the STL, sorry, of the, of the models. So this is very important. You can do that in the perfect way. Luca Lavonia said before, said before, we have the right measure and it is true because we can measure the face of the patient and we can do that because we use, always we use the glasses on the head and we have the um, our flow or we study this workflow many, many times in many patients in uh, different publications. So we want to, to transfer, we want to share this uh, workflow because it uh, can be as the real measure and the real superimposition from the face of the patient and the SFTL of the mouth. So now, after this phase, I want to, um, 
to have a prototype from the patient. This is very important. We spoke last in the last webinar about the cost of this digital workflow. But if you have from a, an entire digital workflow, if, if you have a prototype, we can mm, fit this prototype inside the mouth and we can have some infor more information about the final result. So I want to get the final volume of the patient. If you have the final volume of the patient uh, about uh, the new prosthesis, you can study very well the right position of the implant inside the bones, okay? So this is a, um, a preparation of prototype from Mark Hortensi, and you can use what you want about teeth, commercial teeth. You can use library from your 3D, 3D software, but the position of this, this is from DSS, from the final position in DSS. So, 30 seconds about this video. So this is the position of the, the teeth, the library inside the 3D software with DSS like a guide for the dental technician. This is very important. And now I can transfer this, uh, this phase to a 3D printer. So I can get one or two or more uh, prototype and I can um, control this prototype inside the mouth. Okay, okay, this is uh, the final part of the video. This is uh, um, the wax, the wax up of the, the, the prototype. Now, Mark Hortensio or you, if you have a 3D printer, you can send this HTL to a 3D printer. You can get the prototype, the final prototype. Now, this prototype is, is, is not expensive. You can fit it inside, you can check it, you can control it inside the mouth of the patient. You can change the shape a little bit of one teeth or you can control the occlusion, right? But the occlusion, I think, and I know, is perfect. You have to change um, sometimes a little part of the tooth. Uh, you can change the shape, but you have a um, real position, um, mandible uh, um, position. Now, we check, we control the prototype inside the mouth. I can talk with the patient. And, and when the patient says to me, look, okay, I like this situation. I want to move to have implants. I want to move to the uh, dental surgeon, like Luca Lavonia. Please give me some implants because I want to improve the situation. So the last thing that I do before to to, to, to transfer this, to share with Luca Lavore and this information, this patient, have to have a CBCT from the final volume. So what I want, I want the final volume. I think this is a big, 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 big mistake if you have a CBCT before this information. Now, I uh, share with Luca Lavore, my patient. Okay, Luca, let's go. Well, thank you very much. Okay, okay, I can share my screen now. Okay. So, as Lucas showed, um, I have the complete diagnosis. I don't need any more. Thanks to the realization of the mock-up, we can get to the heart of the surgical planning. The prototype is used to make the CBCT. In a dental patient, it is advisable to adopt a radiological template because there are no anatomical elements useful for creating the matching file between STL and diagram. In this way, we can achieve a perfect alignment of files. We can thus visualize all the patient's anatomical parameters, teeth, soft tissue, and tissue. What else can an implant surgeon want? We have all clinical parameters to correctly plan the most appropriate surgery for the patient. The surgical project therefore becomes real. From the virtual project, we can print a master model containing the position of the implants and which allows to create the surgical template. Like so. Can we simply insert the template
on the top of the plate right now. <clears throat> Templates and index will reposition perfectly also on the initial model. Black one on the left side. That happens to ensure that all working models can be mounted in the articulator. Never change the functional parameters established with the mockup. This is named cross mounting protocol. We are preparing to face surgery, and the fundamental role of the index still appears evident. An error in this phase in the positioning of the template compromises the whole intervention. Also, here it's very clear how the mockup leads each operational phase. On the left, we have the prototype in the first visit and on the right in the moment of the surgery with a similar incisal plane. Here we can see the video of the surgery. Okay. As already indicated, it is, it's essential to position the template correctly. The presence of the rigid index represents a very large advantage. As we show. The most important moment is when we go to position the anchor pins. Anesthesia will be performed exclusively in correspondence of the alveolar mucosa and well in advance before positioning the template in order to minimize the possibility that the infiltrated soft tissue can display the template itself. Once the pins have been positioned, if possible, both in the vestibular and the palatal areas, in order to reduce the vestibular palatine movements, we can remove the template and proceed with the surgery as planned. Okay. If possible, I always prefer to manage soft tissue by making a well done flap for several reasons. Mainly because it allows me to preserve the keratinized gingiva and then the possibility of improving the bone volumes around the implant. Then we can put another, another time our template. Okay. We can position the same anchor pins in the same positions of before. We are sure of that position. We are sure of the position of the surgical template. As can be seen from the template list, it's a very old case that I am proud to show you because it represents one of the first cases about three years ago, in which the full digital implant workflow was described. To date, we adopt surgical templates that present more performing sleeves, for example, sleeveless surgical templates or the composable surgical templates that allows you to approach any surgical case from the most simplest 
to the most complex ones. The message I want to convey to you, however, is the importance of choosing a diagnostic project and following it perfectly in every phase of the work. The mock-up is the key factor. Well, here we have the two-dimensional radiographic exams. And even better, you can compare the initial surgical project with the post-operative check and appreciate the exact correspondence between the two ones. Below is the flow of healing. And after post-integration period with stable and mature tissue, look at how can we continue? Thank you. Thank you, Luca. I have to share the screen. A few seconds, please. Now here. Okay. Okay. Now, right, you can see my screen, yes? I am. Veronica, yeah? Okay. Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Now, after the healing of the tissue, I can take the digital impression of my implants. I believe in this technique. I think if you have some particular situation, you can always, you can take digital impression on a scan abatments. Because I think is uh, now the literature is, uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, publication about this technique. So I don't have fear to obtain, to get, a good impression of my patient. Oh, and I think, um, yes, sometimes you, you can have some problems, but I think you can control this problem during your daily practice. And I prefer to build a um, digital model. I don't use uh, two models in this phase, in this step of my technique, but I prefer with my nephew, Marco Stensi, to use uh, digital model, but I have and I want to control my bar inside the mouth. So uh, I do with the dental technique um, the final project of the bar, and you can see like it's so easy to get the real shape, the final shape of the bar with when you have the final volume. So during the first visit, we collected the data to obtain, to get the final vulnerable of the patient with prototype. And now, now Luca Lavonia um, put in the right position the implants, because if you have the final volume, you can use the guided surgery in the best manner. So you have the, the right position of the implant inside the volume. And the prosthetic part is perfectly inside the final venom. This is a very, very important. And I think is a, a big mistake. Don't have this information during the our uh, workflow. In the hour overflow, we begin. Thank you, Carlo Borromeo for this video. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot Carlo <laughs> Borromeo, sorry. Thank you, Carlo, for this video. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marco Tensi. Uh, so, like you, as you can see on the screen, the, um, the shape of the bar is inside the final volume. So I took two images. I did a virtual planning inside each of my system. I share with my dental technician all the information. So, and Marco Tensi inside the 3D software uh, produced a prototype. Send this information to 3D printer. And now uh, I have a two, I, I to share, I, um, I share with the Luca Lavornia the final uh, volume, and we did a CBCT. We uh, put some implant inside the bones, and now now we can produce some bars. The, this type of bar, okay? Because we want in this case to make uh, um, uh, to make two uh, overdentures, but the workflow is the same for 
fixed uh, prosthesis doesn't change the workflow. If you want to have uh, another prosthesis, doesn't change the workflow. It's the same, okay? This is my choice to have two, two over dental on this patient. But I believe in the digital impression, but I want to check, like in the analog system, if you take an impression of four implants for a, a, a bar, you have to, <laughs> to control, your, you have to fit inside the mouth of your bar, you have to check everything. So I want uh, this type of bar, uh, aluminum bar, to, to control the correct, um, the correct precision, the accuracy of my bar inside the mouth. After this part, I can uh, produce the final bar and the final prosthesis. If I have a problem on, in, on uh, my bar, I can cut the bar and can take a new impression, but uh, we don't have mm, time to talk about it. But in another webinar, maybe we can talk about uh, the digital impression on implants. If you want, Luca, if you want, Veronica, because I think we can't talk in a perfect way in so, uh, in so a few minutes. But like you can see, sorry, I, okay, I cut the audio. If you want, and I believe in it, if you want a perfect shape of the tissue, the posterior tissue, when I uh, have the final bar and I fit it inside the mouth, I want two final models. I want to produce my final prosthesis on a stone model because if you want a real um, anatomy of the, of the tissue, of the bones in posterior area, you have to take an analog impression in this phase, in this phase, in this step. So from virtual to the production, here you can see some, uh, some aspect about our, uh, our role flow. So we have, uh, we have uh, um, a bar, uh, we, are, we use uh, a, a type of a attachment here, but it's not important. It's important that you can control the position of your attachment inside the volume. And we can obtain the right space, the, the right space for the attachment uh, in this position, the space for the tissue, the space for everything, okay? Thank you, Carlo Borromeo, for that. This is another example. Okay, we work always in this way. We work always with a, a digital workflow when we, um, we, we do a bar inside a 3D software, for example, Exodat, but you can use 3 shapes. it's not important. But you have now the possibility to control in every moment your bar inside the value. This is very important. But at the end, you have the bar and you have to check the bar. So we prefer in this phase, and I said that before, a stone model. So I can try the bar on the model. I can try the uh, major structure on the bar. I can try, try uh, I can check, I can change some, um, the shape of the bar if necessary. I don't want this uh, prematurity here, but I want you to have the perfect contact, the major structure on the bar, on the final bar. Now, this, uh, this, um, these are, <clears throat> sorry, these are the final bars, and you can see what the perfect polishing of the bar. This is very important. If you want to have a, a health tissue near your bar, it's important that the patient cleans this bar very well. Yes, right. But if you don't have a bar so uh, so clean, a bar so perfect uh, polish in all parts, you can't give to the patient the right condition to clean uh, himself, uh, his mouth. This is the final uh, prosthesis, simple prosthesis. It's not important, but I think the overdentos is not like a B-movie. Overdentos is like a good prosthesis, like a fixed prosthesis. But I use it, and Luca Lavornia uh, uses it, when it's necessary, when we want to support the lip. 
Now, we have the final control with the X-ray. We uh, uh, put the bar inside the mouth. We check everything. We control everything about the, uh, the hygiene of the patient. And this is, we control the occlusion of the patient. When I control the occlusion of the patient, I use always the analog method. I use, uh, I don't know, um, colored paper, I use, uh, I look inside, I look at inside the mouth, I want you to see the movement, but, but remember, the electromyography at the end of uh, this phase is so important because you can check the real state of your muscles at the end of your therapy. It's not important for uh, someone, but for me and for my, for my group, for all uh, the team, it's important to know that at the end of our therapy, the muscles of the patient are better than before. All right. So this is the final uh, um, prosthesis inside the mouth, okay? And this is the, the entire workflow. Two minutes more, Luca. The I entire workflow. I took two photos. I took digital impression of the patient, the mouth of the patient. I did uh, uh, an electromyography exam and I share all this information with my team and in particular with my dental technician. So he can build inside a 3D software a prototype. I can uh, check this prototype inside the mouth and now I can transfer this patient and all the information to Luca Lavornia to have a CBCT with the final volume of the patient. Luca Lavornia, or oh, hi, I'm mean also uh, a good uh, surgeon like him, but <laughs> sometimes okay. I, I, kill, uh, I kill someone in my dental office, but <laughs> 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 he is the master, and, and, uh, but it's not important. Thank now you know. we have the... Um, surgical guide inside the mouth and can cut the, the patient in the perfect way. Perfect is not, I am a big, big, the best surgeon in the world, but it's the best situ situation because I am a normal dentist and I can put the implants in the right position. This is true. And now this is the best thing that I can do on my patient. Sorry, but I am Italian, so I have to move my body. But I, so I, I cut my camera because I am here like, without jacket, without a uh, uh, shirt. Okay. <laughs> so this is the final volume, and this is the final bars. And this is a proto this protocol. Our um, uh, protocol is patent pending in Europe. It's very, very, very important. Thank you, guys. Now, this is the, my patient uh, after one year, one year of follow up and she is happy and uh, she is, has a good aesthetic, she has a good function and thank you very much for your attention and I leave my, the, my screen to my friend Luca Lavornia for the uh, final part of the, of the lecture. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Luca. Okay. Thank you very much, Luca. Thank you very much. As implant surgeon, I don't need to do any more and just a part The, the, the therapy thanks to the diagnostic mock-up at the entire flow. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So what are the key okay okay so what are the key factors? First of all make a correct prosthetic treatment plan. Thanks to DSS this phase is strongly facilitated but even without such innovative technologies making a correct diagnosis is our primary objective. Then, and in the dentist, the dentist corresponds with the prosthetic project. Therefore, surgery can be planned with maximum safety and predictability. And finally, respect for the diagnostic project. Only thanks to computer guided surgery, we can be consistent with the diagnosis and insert the implants in the correct position. And thanks to the cross mounting protocol, as shown by Luca, we can transfer this project to every phase of our work. That's why we strongly believe that dentistry must be guided by the smile, that is, by a correct 
diagnosis. So diagnosis guided dentistry. I want to conclude by recalling that when we are in the field of innovation, scientific research cannot always provide us with support. Often, we will not be able to find the answers as we need. However, the lack of evidence cannot be interpreted as even in the absence of an evidence-based model is not to lose sight of the goal, to manage each patient with precision and excellence. Without a far-sighted vision, we cannot have perspective. Don't be afraid of the future. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks, Zerodonto. Thanks, the audience, for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Luca. So we're on time. Yes, thank perfectly. Uh, I'm afraid there are no questions, at least uh, not written questions. During the, there were no written questions during the presentation. Uh, I would. Um, ask uh, the uh, attendees if uh, they want to ask something real time by raising uh, the hand there is a question yes i see i, I can see okay what in the, the chat number? yes um, okay um, luca i do that okay i do this question uh, in the chat Okay, for the colleague about the zirconium bar. I don't believe in zirconium bar, I'm so sorry. I know, I know. In, uh, in the international literature, you can find it. But in my, all my patients, I prefer don't use, don't use zirconium bar. In uh, um, over dental therapy, no, I can't. I can't use it because I think you can use a different materials if you don't want to use uh, metals but i think if you you can try you can find it in the market now uh, composite materials or you can find another type of materials for example i am studying the graphene is a new material and I, I study it not not on the patients but my at my university and i think the future will be i think i think will be with this new materials. But for now, if you want to, to, to do uh, um, a, fix, a fixed prosthesis with the cranial bar, you can do that, you can do that. But if you read the very well the literature, you know, um, I think, uh, is it a risk, I think. I don't use, for example, the cranial bars on brachyfacial, on square face patient, because the, the, the force, the muscles force of this patient is so high, and I think, I, I can't have a, a, a good follow-up about this bar, but this is my idea, I'm sorry. What do you think, Luca? I think so, I think so. Uh, I completely agree with you. I would like to answer to Luigi Guida. I think that I have to answer before Nitenem, because before in the chat, I read that, uh, before I read that Luigi, uh, Luigi prefer um, an Italian answer, and then I can translate in English. So, um, Luigi chiede, chiede se uh, dopo aver fatto la combin con il prototipo e le bobite in bocca, deve fare quindi una scansione della presidentura, poi una scansione del prototipo, poi una scansione del prototipo con le bobite e mettere tutto nel software di pianificazione. No, Luigi, assolutamente no. Il prototipo già tiene conto di tutto quello. Per aver fatto un prototipo hai già fatto una scansione, l'hai fatta in prima visita e il prototipo tiene conto quindi dei parametri come Luca ti ha spiegato nella prima visita digitale di dimensione verticale e ovviamente di accoppiamento perfetto con la presidentura della paziente. Le bobite ti consente di accoppiare tutto, quindi è sufficiente fare la con BIM con l'EvoByte, il prototipo, e inviare fisicamente al centro di produzione DIME, perché nel centro di produzione DIME faranno l'accoppiamento grazie ad una, ad una scansione di tutti questi pezzi insieme, ma lo faranno non con una scansione intraorale, ma lo faranno con uno scanner da laboratorio, ok? Quindi non c'è nessun problema. Se dovessi aver ritoccato, ma lo devi fare prima della combim, quindi ritoccato il mock-up per mille motivi, funzione, estetica o una distorsione, qualsiasi cosa, comunque resta tutto invariato. Il mock-up ritoccato 
fai la TAC e lo invii. Quindi non c'è nessun, nessun tipo di difficoltà nel workflow. Semplicemente fare la TAC con il mockup e fisicamente inviare mockup Evobyte al centro di produzione. So in English, Luigi Guida uh, asked to us if it is necessary to, to have an internal scan um, before to, uh, to put the patient in the radiographic device for having the CBCT. It's not necessary because uh, for, for having the prototype, for having the prototype, the prototype for an dental patient, we already have all the clinical data of the patient, okay? For having, for realizing the prototype in the mouth of the patient, we already uh, have done an internal scan or an, an analogic impression and digitalize it. So, just to put the patient into the machine, the radiographic machine, and then you have to send the prototype and the Evobyte, that is the uh, radiographic, uh, uh, Referment, referral uh, to the production center for, for having the surgical template. In the production center of the template, the engineer can match all the clinical data of the patients. Thanks to the scan, but desk scan, not internal scan. And uh, if you need to modify your prototype, always before to having the radiographic exam is not a problem. Just send the modified prototype to the production center because the engineer can scan the prototype that you have, you had to modify for, I don't know, several reasons, for example, function, aesthetics or distortion. And then the engineer can match, thanks to the radiographic template, can match all the files, all the information in the same system. And then the production send, center can send to you all the matched files for analyzing it into the uh, surgical planning software. <coughs> so that's it. There are uh, some... Okay, yes. Thank you, Luca. There are uh, a couple of questions more. Uh, the first one is from June. How does the surgical guide account for thick and thin gingival tissue or the flap when it's raised? Yes, good question, thanks. I think that uh, the um, implant surgeon has to be the protagonist of the design of the template. You have to calculate uh, a space for raising the flap, okay? For raising the flap. Or to have to calculate uh, uh, exactly your incision line for having, for example, anchor pins that not uh, limit your incision. Or uh, for example, you have to have a GBR procedure and you cannot have uh, an hole in your flap. So we have to project perfectly thanks to the engineer, okay? And uh, in a digital way, it's so simple, okay? Like in this way, okay? You have a, a video conference with your engineer and you can, you, you can say all, all your information, okay? And uh, you can check exactly the design of the plate before to print it, print it. Print it. And then, um, always, as you, as I show you in the video, always I prefer to have a flap, especially for thin gingival tissue, as you can improve and you can uh, achieve more volume for your gingiva, okay? I don't prefer never a flapless surgery, never a flapless yes. surgery. Yes. So you can work always in a gu uh, guided surgery approach, okay? in for having uh, your completely completely um, space for your flat okay you you can have a lot really really a lot of design of templates for helping you in different ways but in this case we would like to show you just a clinical case but uh, in the previous week and in the future we have a lot of webinars 
for explaining all the procedure in a different in the, of different protocols in a guided surgery approach. Well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. There is another question from the chat from one of the attendees and then uh, three questions from our Facebook friends. Yes. Uh, the first question is, uh, what would you advise or tell patients if they ask how long will this yeah. implant over denture last? Yes. Would you often see implants failing first or the over dentures fail first? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I think it is not uh, uh, totally true. So um, I think for the colleague, you know, uh, remember for me the name, please, uh, Veronica, because I didn't find I find the, the chat now. But um, I think uh, um, this situation is um, real if you have uh, two implants in a standard verdenture, and uh, sometimes. Um, I lose the patient because I I do implants in the mandible, uh, two only two, I eh? only two implants, and after one year the, I lose the patient. The patient change uh, change dentist or uh, change uh, town and I come back in my dental office after three or four years, and I have a problem because I can't control the patient in this situation and. I think uh, if you look, uh, um, if you check the literature about this argument, you can see um, this is not true. We have the same uh, level of a failure from a fixed prosthesis and overdenture. But I talking about, I'm talking about this this overdentures. So this overdentures. So when you have a bar that is like a, a fixed prosthesis for implants and when do you control the force of the patients and when do you control the, the bone in the same manner with the surgical guide. So I think if you have a, a, a overdenture only on two implants or you have implants uh, in uh, or you don't have a, a perfect overdenture or, or you don't control, I don't talking about you, clear this this, uh, this uh, fact but i um, i am talking about uh, a general situation i think you can lose uh, more implants but in the literature if you have a, a perfect workflow uh, or a standard workflow you have the same failure of implants with over dental prosthesis or fisted prosthesis i think that and i i have uh, i read uh, it on in the literature Thank you for your question. Is it not a silly question? Okay, uh, the next question uh, arrives from uh, a Facebook friend, I think Dr. Abderrahman. How do you check perfect adaptation of the bar by a plaster cleft made in stone model? Mm, um, my, um, okay, sorry, but I understand the question, but um, I control, I check the bar. I don't have a model because in the first phase, I don't have a model. So my dental technician uh, produce um, a bar in the uh, digital environment on the uh, impression, digital impression. So he, he gives to me um, an aluminum bar and I check this aluminum bar inside the mouth. And this is the most important part of my clinical activity. So I know if my bar is correct or no. We have a problem about uh, the, um, the visibility of aluminum in the uh, Rx, um, um, I don't know, the right word, sorry. But if you have, um, if you use aluminum bar inside the mouth and you take a Rx, uh, to the patient, it's very difficult to, to see the real precision of this bar. So um, it's not a perfect material to check the final position of the implant, but I think we don't have another manner to obtain to get more information in this way. So uh, this is the most important part. So the control of the passivation of the bar in the overdenture prosthesis, but the same in the fixed prosthesis. So I hope to have uh, to, to give you a, a answer, a correct answer. Thank you, Dr. Ortensi. The next one uh, <coughs> is from Maxim Plant. 
what are the criteria in this case which led you to make an overdenture on a bar and not a fixed prosthesis? Um, Luca. Luca, if you want, you can you you can answer mentioning another time the the paper, scientific paper, or Mariana Brampu, for yeah. example. Yeah. Now I I share yes. Thank you very much. I share this this situation with. I don't know what I'm sharing. <laughs> Stop sharing, sorry. Mm, all right. Now, okay. Yeah, wait, please. Wait, please, please. Yeah, okay. Can you see my screen, Veronica? No, not yet. No, not, not yet. yet. No, not yet. Sorry. No. Share the screen now. And now? Beginning. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, we okay. can see it. Now, I think if you want to have a, a, a different, uh, um, you have a different situation on this patient. For example, if this patient tell me, doctor, I want a fixed prosthesis, and I want it. I don't want a removable prosthesis. I, <laughs> I have to, to, to talk with the patient, and I, I, I want to, to do the right thing for air, for example. So, before I collect data, and it, this one is one of the, the, the exams that I do. So, I take the impression of the old denture. I measure the thickness of the denture in the frontal area. So I know if I have a big flange, I have a prosthesis with a thickness of seven or eight millimeters. I think, but it's, this is my idea. I can or difficult in the phonetic uh, expression of the patient. So when the patient talk, uh, can't talk very well. The expression of the words is so uh, bad, I think, sometimes. And I cheated before. This study from Mariana Vrampu, sorry, this one, where you can see on the screen. This is the bone of the patient on the right of the screen. This is from Mariana Vrampu, the, this publication. And you have the implants here. So you have a triangle here, and you can measure the distance from the central incisor and the bone. If you have more than five millimeters, it's better use uh, uh, over dental. But you have to talk with the patient, depend, dependence of the situation. I think you have to, to talk with the patient to share with him all data, all uh, problems. I speak. Uh, um, with the patient uh, for 30 minutes, one hour the first time, because I want to, to understand very well what the patient wants. And when I collect data and I share with them something more on the screen, on the software, I can talk, I can talk with them. And sometime I say to him, this is the best way, for example, over dental. But when he say to me, he says to me, doctor, I don't want over dental. Okay, I give it to you a fixed prosthesis, but you will have these problems. For example, the uh, phonetic problem or another type of uh, problem. I remind you about um, publication of uh, Mariana Varampu and uh, other. Uh, it's very difficult. Now, I can, I can um, show today uh, a part of our workflow where we use, uh, I look at Laboni, all groups, all group use uh, the, um, the lateral, um, the radiographic, uh, um, lateral lateral radiographic of the patient because I want to have more information about that R, um, Rx. Uh, but it's not, I can't show you this type of uh, uh, exam today. I, I've shown, just shown 
last uh, in the last webinar in the last uh, webinar. So I hope uh, I have a, I have a made a, a right answer. I don't know. Yes. If you want, me. if you want, uh, Veronica, you can give to everybody our email or your email, so we can answer all questions. Uh, by email because it's easier for us to have a correct uh, yes uh, we can share uh, the, the information okay. better way okay sure i will do it uh, there are uh, a couple of questions more one is from prabhat shreshta uh, could you explain the design of the bar like the height width and space between bar and tissue <laughs> we need another course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, sorry. <laughs> Italian. If you uh, look, if you read uh, publication about this argument and you study very well the publication of PubMed about this argument, about this specific argument you can see in the letter you can find what is dangerous to do bar near tissue soft tissue because you have a hyperplasy you have a you have a, a, a changing of the tissue but i did i said in during my lecture if you want a perfect tissue you have to polish very well your bar if you can polish very well your bar is not because you you can't do that because you can't have the capacity but sometimes the metal is no good you have little um, little holes inside the metals and so we have uh, um, a very difficult situation to hold a gene of the patient so it's true in the letter you can find it but in the new situation where you have uh, uh, for me, uh, perfect polishing bar, you have a different bar from the CAT CAM, you have less problem than before about this argument. Veronica? Okay, yes. I, I think that we have to answer to a very good friend, Nike. <laughs> Nike, that's a uh, that's Giacomo Snichelotto, uh, Dr. Snichelotto. Uh, exactly, but we, we can ask him, he said to me that we can answer also in English. Okay. And have you seen, have you seen the, the question before in the Q&A section? Oh, this one. It's in the chat, the general chat. Che riferimenti hanno gli scan Exactly. Uh, which references have scan abutments uh, in an edentulous uh, patient? If um, the I don't know how to say it in English. Positionatore forato is not available. <laughs> Positioner. <laughs> I, sorry, uh, I <laughs> I can't translate it. So 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 uh, exactly. I, I, how can we take an impression, visual impression, in the identical patient uh, when we have a scan of action? Thank you for for the question. In the um, upper arch. Giacomo is not a big problem. It could be a problem if we we would like to to have a digital scan uh, after surgery, because you know very well the technology or the iOS. And um, if you have blood and if you have a flap or tissue that are not stable, it's so difficult to to achieve a good result. So in that case, you always need uh special device that uh will sign that you you know very well um so if you are in the upper arch it's not a good problem because you have the palate and you can link the keratinized gingiva uh, of the palate for having the the the, the complete scansion of the arch the only trick only trick that uh, I can uh, I can say to you is to put the scan abutment in different position. For example, for 
the geometry um, alignment tool that is the inclined plane of the scan abutment one scan abutment uh, for example, for example, vestibular side and the other one palatal side, uh, in order to uh, facilitate the scan uh, for recognizing exactly each scan abutment. In the lower arch, it could be a problem. Depends on the volume or the keratinized gingiva. Normally, I perform it. Uh, thanks to a very strict uh, scan strategy, but if if uh, and the, it depends also uh, for the for for the scan that you have. Okay, not all scan permit you to have a very simple scan of uh, an endodontal job. But uh, if I cannot perform it, I ask to my technician to have such a template, okay, that I can fix just at one scan abutment, okay, and as holes in the correspondence of the other scan abutments for having a simply scan, internal scan. The important thing for an uh, internal scan that uh, the scan, the light of the scan can, um, can have a surface for uh, reflect the light. Okay, so uh, I, I need a template with a white uh, opaque resin, not as the surgical template, a special template, okay, a white template, opaque template, and um, between one hole uh, and the other ones uh, in which you can see the geometry of your scan abutments, you can have also the surface of the teeth uh, in order to facilitate the technician to match, to align perfectly your scanning of the arch to the project, the initial project, the, the same project of the mock-up and you can perform perfectly your protocol, your workflow. Great, That's Luca, it. thank you. I think we've reached the final, the last question which comes from Mateus Gitzler. How do you combine digitally STL model of dentures and model of edentulous maxilla? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, okay. it depends uh, in which phase of the workflow do you mean? For example, at first time or the, the visit? Uh, wait, uh, um, mm. I can uh, show a video, a little video, the last one because I saw uh, I have to, to, to find but one minute I can share the la so you can talk on the video but um, Luca you can wonderful. talk about wow, wonderful yeah 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 so we have uh, for the colleague uh, this video I didn't show it because see the screen now yes or not yes veronica you can see the screen yes yes absolutely yes okay now we have the video here wait okay When I'm impressed with the analog uh, workflow, no in the digital workflow, with the um, elastomeric material, and uh, we can scan this elastomeric material from Vermac, from another another companies, uh, and other companies. So we can uh, use this system. So like uh, relining a, a whole denture. So I have the uh, dig I can scan this uh, um, elastomeric material, and I can make. The, I can do the superimposition from the STL from the, the old denture with the elastomeric material and the positive of the impression, so the virtual mode, like this, like you can see on the screen. So this is, I know, it's not uh, easy to understand, I'm sorry. 
but in this way you have the perfect position of the whole dendro or your occlusal rim with the elastomeric material and the final uh, model or a digital model or the final model this is the way and uh, if you want to have uh, to take uh, a digital impression of the soft tissue you can do the same and my dental technician uh, does a occlusal rim in a 3d printer on uh, on this digital on this file from a digital impression and you can obtain the same result it's impossible to don't match this situation from the stl from the stl of the whole dental and the stl of the uh, of the tissue of the tissue and you i show i've just shown you uh, this situation after the dental technician um, makes a superimposition inside the software. Okay. And uh, if the colleague means to, um, to having a correct matching files between, uh, between the DICOM file, for example, of the STL file of the dental search and the STL file of the dentures or the mockup, uh, in the uh, surgery planning protocol, um, you can have a correct matching thanks to the radiographic template. Uh, in each phase, uh, working phase, uh, you have to you have to consider that we need a device that can link the different files. So, as Luca said before. Uh, in the first visit, you need uh, the occlusal rim if you don't have a correct uh, previous prosthesis for having a correct matching file. Uh, um, in, the, in, in, in the next matching files uh, from DICON to STL, you need, if you don't have anatomic element for having a correct matching file, you need uh, the link that uh, we called Evobite, that is the radiograph template with that uh, red the correct element for a mm -hmm. well, Thank you very okay. much. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I think everything was perfectly clear. Yes. Uh, so I would ask uh, Ciro if he would like to say something to uh, the Zerodonto audience. Yes, yeah, thank you, Veronica. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Yes, I just want to thank you all. I am very happy because uh, we shared some spare time in a useful way. We are trying to keep people at home all over the world during these hard days for everyone. And this is what we must do. And this is the reason why you will be able to see other webinars like this one in the next days. Uh, tomorrow live on our Facebook group, Zerdonto Dentistry, um, we will have Dr. Enzo Fodi with another webinar. So it's been a pleasure and uh, I want to thank you again. You are. It was all our pleasure. So thank you everybody for uh, joining today and meet you soon, very soon again online. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zerodonto. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank doctors. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Enjoy your day. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao.